to every good portfolio needs a great bio page. And what's also good about putting this together now is when we do a website based portfolio, and also have our profile on lots of different freelancer websites and other places uh, to have your portfolio or profile, all this is going to come in handy. So in the goals section of the class, you've already written kind of a bio, uh, but we're going to talk about how to kind of perfect that bio for different situations. So for a print or digital PDF, you can be a little bit longer with your bio. That's okay. You can dedicate an entire page to it or a half a page, uh, whatever you feel like you have room for. So you've already written your bio, but what do you do? Do you do a third person bio or a first person bio? So you can download this uh, document so you can kind of see how I, I have written her bio. I've done it from a third person and a first person. Which one works better? That's really up to you. What's great about each one, the first one, the first person bio, what's great about this is you get to write this from your own perspective. I did this. I got these awards. Um, it's great to be able to be personal. You feel like you're talking directly to the viewer, which has that personal touch to it. The great thing about a third person bio, which is where it feels like someone else is writing to you. So uh, you talk in the third person. So Lillian Hernandez was always dabbling in creative things from sketching portraits in high school to diving head first into Photoshop before Photoshop was even a thing. Lillian is now using her very talents. So you can kind of see how it looks like someone wrote this for them. It looks really professional. And when you look at a lot of uh, really famous people's bios, uh, usually they use third person because it's really hard when you reach a certain level of success. It's kind of hard to talk about yourself in the first person without sounding a little conceited. Uh, so that's where the third person is nice because you can talk about awards that you've won but you can do it in a way that doesn't sound like you're boasting. Um, so that's kind of the benefit to the third person bio. So you can take a look and figure out which how you want to craft it if you wanted to do in the third person or the first person. And we could be a little bit longer with this. So now that we have our bio put together, well, we're going to head into InDesign and we're going to lay this out. Of course, we need to find the best cropping for our profile image or our headshot. We're going to do that right now. So I'm starting to put together all the essential things that we're going to need for her bio page. We have a headshot, we have kind of this attention grabbing headline, and then the bio. So I just took the first line of her written bio and made it more of a headline to kind of grab your attention. So you just don't have a big old block of bio. You want to have it be, have little pull quotes or little interesting things to break up large blocks of text. And this is a pretty large bio. So we could even put a pull quote here. We can uh, uh, kind of put a little space in here and find some kind of pull quote there. There's a lot of different things we can do to make this a little bit more interesting. And so with headshots, we want to make sure it's nice and big. This is a chance for people to really get to know you and, and to kind of um, have a personal connection with you along with the bio. We can also put another photo in the background, maybe faded of some work or maybe her at work, maybe her at a desk or take a picture of you or have a friend take a picture of you working at your computer, at your desk, something that makes um, you more of a real person. We want to make you a real person, not just someone smiling in the camera. So having that secondary photo would be really important to have along with a formal headshot. So I'm going to kind of work with this layout a little bit. You can also work in client testimonials. You could put three client testimonials here in this area so that people can see your bio. They can read all the great things clients have said about you. Not all of you are going to have client testimonials yet. Uh, so you may not be able to do that, but you can work in other things, uh, certain facts about you, certain skill sets that you have. I would think of this a little bit like a resume. You don't have to be quite as detailed or have your entire work history. We're not going to do anything like that, but this will act a little bit like a resume. You're not applying for a job, but you're applying for client work. Um, a little bit different, but you're going to want to know and, and tell people about your skill sets and kind of, kind of talk about who you are a little bit. This is the final bio page I came up with after maybe an hour of finding several different versions. I want to do a couple things. I definitely wanted to have a bigger headshot. I wanted to have that background photo of, of, of a creation process, although this particular photo is not perfect. It at least kind of proves the point of having just one other secondary photo of that person or you in action would be really helpful. I also included a kind of a script 
font for the bottom to look like it was a, a handwritten signature. I think handwritten signatures are great. You can actually write it with a pen and take a picture of it and be able to import that in that way so you can get a real signature. That'll be even more authentic than using a script font. Also included a quote down here. Of course, if you're using a quote on your project down here, make sure these quotes are different. Make sure you find a different quote. You don't want to repeat the same one um, all the time. So we want to make sure you have different quotes there if you even have a quote. And then I like to incorporate the logo um, again here on the on the bio page to kind of bring home that brand consistency and kind of show them a little bit of uh, your talent at work and, and, and branding your own stuff. So this is it. This is kind of uh, what we've created for the bio. Now, where does the bio fit in all of this? So we have our cover photo, we have a bio, we have two projects. We'll have a third project there at the bottom. You know, where do we put their bio? A lot of people put it as the first page, but we have a nice cover photo, so we have it as the second page. Some people wait and they put it after the first project as kind of a storytelling kind of thing where they have a project, then you show, share a little bit about yourself. Um, I kind of prefer it after the cover photo, uh, but you can put it really on any page you'd like. Uh, you can go ahead and zoom out and figure out where you think it would fit well in the plan. Um, as I mentioned before in uh, prior lessons, you can sprinkle in a little bit about yourself through uh, between each project. So instead of having one big bio page, you can divide that up and uh, be able to uh, sprinkle that out between projects so people get to know you uh, through a series of different paragraphs. Um, so here's kind of your, uh, I would call it a more of a resume kind of presentation. It's not exactly a resume, but it's kind of written a little bit more like that. You're trying to sell yourself. This is your big marketing page, your marketing push. So there you have it. We have just created a PDF portfolio. We can export this as a PDF. I'm in Adobe uh, InDesign, but if you're in Canva or even in Word, just export that in a PDF digital or print, depending on which one you need. Um, I would do a Adobe PDF um, interactive or print or digital version if you're going to be uploading, uploading it to a website or emailing it. If, if anybody's ever going to print it out, which is kind of rare these days, you'd make sure you do a print version. But an interactive version keeps it nice and light, so the file size is not so heavy. We're going to go ahead and export that. Um, just another side note, uh, try not to export PDFs as spreads which is what this looks like. It's a spread. Um, you want to do single pages because that's easier for people to look at when you email it. So I'm just going to keep it as single pages and exporting it all. And of course, this is not a finished PDF portfolio. It's still kind of in process, but just wanting to show you a quick example of how I put together that. And of course, next, we have lots of different portfolios to do. We can do our online website-based one next. We're not going to do a full-blown web design, but I'm going to go through some of the basics of what you need to gather together and think about before doing your website-based portfolio. So I'll see you there.